Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sabansky. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. We give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a hell of a show for you guys. Before we get into it, uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the uh, channel. Now, this is going to be a very be a very interesting topic because it's something that it's so out of the blue. I can't even believe it's actually a thing. So, what happened this morning? Uh, I was doing some research. And I saw John Morant's name trending in various places. And I'm like, John Morant, John Morant, John Morant's not playing. What happened? What's what, what's the new thing that happened? And then as I started searching, uh, I found I made my way to Twitter. And on Twitter, uh, you had The Rock. And he was at a, what is it, at a live wrestling um, event. And he was singing this song, what it seemed like, or a poem, whatever the hell he, whatever the hell he was doing. And in the midst of what he was saying, towards the end, out of nowhere, it seems, The Rock decides to take a shot at the Memphis Grizzlies star John Morant because of his recent issues that he's had with, you know, bringing guns or just basically being around guns or showing guns on social media, whatever it is. And after The Rock put out his comments or he made the joke about John Morant, John Morant actually took to Twitter to respond to The Rock like, what the hell is going on? What did I do to deserve this? So what we want to do is want to quickly play what The Rock had to say about John Moran. It's only about a 40 second clip. Uh, and then we're going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what The Rock had to say about John Moran. But you're not alone going to WrestleMania. You got a tag team partner. Woo! That living embodiment of cringe, Seth Rollins. Got a little song for him too. Oh, yeah. Cackling and dancing is all that you do. No wonder that your wife's more popular than you. You're so damn desperate to make them all cheer. But The Rock is gonna take that title, disappear. You're simply an embarrassment, son. Just like John Moran when he's waving a gun. I love you, John. <laughs> so you heard what the rock had to say so what happened then john morant he goes on twitter and we actually want to put up the tweet for you he goes on twitter and he gets a meme or whatever of 50 cent and he essentially says what the f is he talking about me for so what are my thoughts on this you know it's funny yesterday I was watching the Clippers play against the New Orleans Pelicans, the team that they lost to. And in that game, Zion Williamson was there. And as I was watching Zion Williamson, I began to think about him in terms of all of the hype that was surrounding Zion Williamson two years ago. At one point, Zion Williamson was being marketed to be the new face of the NBA. He was everywhere. But after some missteps and things that he did and situations that he found himself in messy, messy situations, and of course, his health not being 100% certain, you rarely hear anybody talk about Zion Williamson. So at the time, Zion Williamson was being hyped, but he was injured. John Morant came out of nowhere and he took the sports world by storm. And at the time, his star was rising so fast that a lot of people were beginning to say, man, John Morant can end up being the face of the NBA. Then what happens? One thing after the other, after the other, after the other start to occur with John Morant to the point where now no one is really talking about him being the face of the NBA. He's just one of the bright stars. And one of the people that they're trying to push these days is either Anthony Edwards or Victor Wembanyama. Now, why are they trying to push those two guys? Anthony Edwards is a young, sensational, a flashy wing player. And he's also American. The NBA wants to push a player like that. Of course, you have Victor, who some can say will be the face of the NBA. He's an international star, so he has international appeal. But no one is really talking about Zion anymore. No one is really talking about Ja. And now Ja finds himself in a position where you have a megastar uh, like The Rock essentially taking a shot at him and Josh sitting back saying to himself, well, what the hell did I do to deserve that? 
And it kind of shows you a fall from grace, not in terms of his basketball play, because obviously John Moran is a sensational NBA player when he's on the court. But in terms of his reputation and his image, it has taken a hit. Both him and Zion. And it made me wonder, like, damn, that's how fast things can change. At one point, you can be on top of the world. You can be going on to be the biggest thing in your sport. And at another point, you have things like this happening about you. The fact of the matter is, in the situation of Ja, he was a repeat offender, and it seemed self-inflicted to the point where it seemed like it stuck. Now, he didn't lose his Nike deal. He still has his Nike deal. Nike's still stuck with him. And I'm sure uh, Sebastian Telfair would be asking himself the question like, yo, why, why didn't Adidas stick with me? Because I saw him recently talking on all the small podcasts with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson about that. But John Moran, I think, is a victim of what happens, man. People, you know, at one point you could be the it kid. And in the next moment, people move on. And essentially, that's what's happening. They're, the NBA now is trying to push Anthony Edwards, push Victor, and these other guys. And that's how it really works. And I think Josh probably sitting back asking himself, like, damn, that's how fast it happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens that fast. So when you're in the spotlight, when you're that guy, you want to ensure that you do things to not, as they say, F up the bag. And in this particular case in sports, your reputation, your brand is everything. If you want to you know, reach a certain level in terms of pristine, you know, having a prestigious reputation and image and all of that stuff, it plays a role. But now you find yourself in a situation where you have, you're becoming a butt of a joke, a punchline by the rock. It's like, wow, that's pretty, pretty incredible. Now, do I think John Moran is going to come back and ball out when he's healthy? Absolutely. Is he a difference maker for his team? Absolutely. Could he be a league MVP candidate? Absolutely. But as of now, uh, this is the situation that he finds himself in. And a lot of it is by his own doing this. In this particular case, there's no one else to blame but Ja. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments. And we catch you on the next show. Peace.